It says that the heart of the gospel is to turn back to God. It says to turn towards God and to put your trust and your confidence in Jesus Christ. So that's God's heart for you. You see, that's a degrading word towards everyone who's here. So let, let's talk about who is God. Many people have a, a misconception of actually who God is, but he's the creator of the heavens, the earth, the seas, and all the things in them. So God created literally what you see above you, but even what you can't see in the spiritual realm. I know many of you probably believe in, in spirits. Many of you are probably, you would even claim to be spiritual. Well, God is the supreme being. God is the one who created each and every person, each and every creature. He created the mountains. He created the seas. He actually created the first two humans. There was a serpent that came in that garden and he began to speak lies to Eve and he began to twist up what God had said and he even began to leave out because I love you, because God loves you. That's why I'm here. Yeah, God, God loves you so much. That's a great question. Why am I here? So, so everyone knows why I'm here. It's because God loves you and because Jesus loves you and he's made a way for you to come into peace with him and to have everlasting life. So sin entered into the world. What's up, man? Jesus loves you so much. He really does. Jesus loves you. Sin's a sin. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right, but I didn't, I didn't even say that yet. So you, ju you just put words in my mouth. But the difference, see, the, the difference is I've turned away from sin and I've turned to Jesus. I put my trust in Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus covers our sin. So listen, I'm not here to tell you that I'm perfect and you're imperfect and I'm going to heaven and you're not going to heaven. I'm not here to tell you all of that stuff, but I'm here to tell you about the one who made me perfect. I'm here to tell you about the one who made a way for me to have all that shame removed away from me and to have all that guilt removed away from me and to have back pain removed away from me and to have sicknesses and diseases moved away from me and one who came to protect me and one who came to love me and one who came to give me my true identity as a son of God. His name is Jesus Christ. And Jesus is here today. He's here with us by his spirit. And if you'll turn to him, he will set you free from the shame that you've been enduring. He'll set you free from the guilt that's within you. Jesus can set you free from the pain that's in your body right now. Jesus can set you free from every sickness that you've had, from every disease that you've had from every thought of self-hatred, from turning and even wanting to harm yourself, Jesus can set you free from that today if you will turn to him and allow him to rescue you. You see, Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus was born of a virgin named Mary. He came into the world just like you came into the world. Jesus was birthed and he was raised up from a young child all the way through his teenage years, all the way into adulthood. And Jesus had to build a relationship with the Father. He had to study out who God was. He had to get to know who God was. And what happened is Jesus was tempted in every single way. So even as you guys have faced temptation, even as you have had the devil come and tempt you and try to lie to you and try to get you to do things that would hurt other people and even harm yourself, Jesus was tempted in every single way. In every way, at Jesus' weakest moments, he was tempted by Satan himself, who's the ruler and the God of this world, the prince of the air, the Bible says, and Jesus never sinned one time. Jesus always committed actions of love, and he always spoke words of love. Though sometimes it was truth that many people didn't want to hear, Jesus always was loving people. That's why he came to this earth to love, to reveal the mercy of God, to reveal the compassion of God. Listen, I'm not here to tell you that you're doomed. I'm not here to tell you that you have no hope. I'm not here to tell you 
that you're stuck and you're going to be in hell. I'm not here to tell you that. I'm here to tell you there's a different way. I'm here to tell you that he's made a way for you to fully receive love and begin to love other people. I'm here to tell you that Jesus can set you free from unclean spirits that have been tormenting you, that have been giving you nightmares when you're sleeping, that have been making you need someone else to try to get up in your thoughts and in your head by going to counselors and things like that. Jesus can set you free from that. Listen, you, you, you don't have to pay a bunch of money to the pharmacist for your anxiety medicine and your depression medicine, and you don't have to pay a bunch of money to go to counselors and psychologists, but Jesus is here today to help you. Listen, I'm here today to help you. Jesus is here to help you. Jesus did not come to condemn you. He didn't come to force you to go to hell and say, listen, you're done, it's over. Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. Jesus came to give hope a joyful expectation of the future. Jesus came for you. He came on a rescue mission for you. Because those who have sinned, they've fallen under the power of Satan. Like I said, Satan only comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came to liberate the captives. He came to bring freedom to those who were in prison. What kind of prison am I talking about? Am I talking about being in the jail cell? about four blocks over. No, I'm talking about the prison of anxiety. I'm talking about the prison of depression. I'm talking about the prison of disease and sickness and HIV and AIDS and whatever else you want to call. Jesus came to set the captives free. He came to bring freedom to them. Many men gathered together with clubs and with swords and they came and they kidnapped Jesus Christ, the Son of God. They came and took him as his disciples fled away, as he told his own disciples, listen, don't fight back. Jesus even revealing his authority, his power. He said at any moment he could have had 12 legions of angels who came to his rescue and who would have sliced and diced all those people who were coming to kidnap Jesus. He even reveals it in this. What was Jesus preaching? Jesus was preaching repentance and remission of sins. What does that mean? That means that if we'll turn away from our sins, if we'll turn away from living for ourselves and doing our own thing and being selfish and self-centered, if we'll turn away from living for us and we'll begin to put our trust and our confidence and hand all of our life over to Jesus, then our sins will be removed far away from us, including the consequences of sin, including the death that we've earned by our own sin. That's what Jesus went about preaching. He was preaching, the Bible says, the kingdom of God. Jesus is the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords and everything has been made subject to him and is placed under his feet and every single person will be held accountable to him including Satan and all the fallen angels who are already judged and who are already condemned, but each and every person will be held accountable before the king and before the Lord and before the judge that God has appointed over all men, over all creation. This dude's drunk. Jesus loves you, brother. Jesus loves you, man. Jesus loves you. Yeah, thank you. Jesus, Jesus does love me. You. Okay, so Jesus does love you, but how about, does he love us? Yeah, he loves you too. That's Derek Overstreet. He's talking to me, he can't. So Jesus does love you, even as he said, Jesus loves me and Jesus loves you too. That's what I'm explaining to you right now. That Jesus took your sin, Jesus took your death, he took the keys of death and of Hades, not just for himself. You see, Jesus had already overcome death in hell and he had already overcome sin but he was taking death and hades for us he was removing it away from us and he was winning our victory in those moments so jesus comes back up and he ascends jesus came back up and the holy spirit breathed life into his body and jesus was resurrected from the dead on the third day so she jumps up in excitement. She runs over and she wraps around Jesus. Hey. What's up? Do you realize, realize uh, Moses was raped by Jacob? Yeah, you, That's not a lie. 
Hey, yeah, talk hey, to him. Don't, don't let him talk to him. So, Jesus, hey, hey, let, let them do it. Yeah, let them do it. No, just, just let them do it. So Jesus then appears to Mary. She comes over and tries to cling to him because she loves him so much. But wait here in Jerusalem until I send you the Holy Spirit, until I send you the helper. Hi, how are you? Doing good? Yeah, Jesus, God is love. Yeah, Jesus loves you so much. He does. Yeah, he loves you so much. He's the one who created you. He has an amazing plan for your life. Yes, ma'am, he sure does. How do I like the weather? How do you like the weather? Yeah? I'm, I'm glad I'm not getting sunburned. I'm kind of pale skinned, so I get sunburned pretty easily. I'm happy about that. Yes, sir. Hey, is, it, is there any way I can pray for you? Jesus, then his disciples are, are sad and they're worried and they're like, Jesus, you can't leave us. All who would call upon Jesus' name will be saved. He, there's no other name under heaven, including Odin. There's no other name under heaven by which men can be saved, but by the name of Jesus Christ. You see, no man can do more good than bad and earn his way to heaven. No man can fulfill the law that God gave to be able to earn and deserve to have a relationship with God and to come back into peace with him. But instead, Jesus came, he took our sin, he took our death, he paid the punishment that we deserve so that the perfect life that he lived could be placed upon us so that God would no longer see our sins, but he would forgive them and remove them far away from us so that we could be at peace with him, so that we could be adopted as God's children. God desires to adopt you to be his child, to care for you, to protect you, to give you eternal life. God desires to heal you and he'll do it today through his son Jesus if you'll turn to him and if you'll call out to him to rescue you and to become the king of your life and to become your Lord. Jesus desires that for you. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I turn away from sin, sin, and I turn back to you. Jesus loves you, man. He loves you. He doesn't like that, but he loves you. What the, 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 what what's he, what's he I don't know. He's drunk. He's just dead a lot. It, it doesn't matter. Just don't focus on him. Hey, bro, do, do you really believe in Odin? You really believe in Odin? Of course I do. Yeah? How did, how do you, how did you come to hear about Odin? Being you're willing to talk? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm willing. So, I never felt a full uh, Christianity even when I was a Christian. Um, I just felt like an outcast. Uh, I felt like uh, just an outcast in the church. So I was under anesthesia and uh, I was looking for answers. And of course, paganism is always studying. So I, uh, as I'm in anesthesia, right? Shortly before I wake up, he comes to me and he says, You're doing the right thing. Keep doing things. Odin said that? Odin said that. What did he look like? Odin. He was a tall guy wearing a hat. We'll cut out. Sure. All right, see you, brother. Sure. Have a good one, man. Yeah. Uh, whenever you get hot in the gear, I love this. Man. Okay. Yeah, 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 for he sure. Was, he was had a white beard, one eye. Wearing a cloak with two ravens on his shoulder with his spear. Gotcha. So he came and said, "What, what, what were you doing at that time?" Where he said, "You're what you're doing is right." 
I was researching and I felt a pull to my ancestors. My ancestors came from Sweden, came from Norway. I am descended from Viking blood. I have Norse blood in my life. So but Vikings? I felt a pull to the Norse pagan religion. At that time, he came to me and he said, you're doing the right thing, keep doing it. I have spoken to him, I have spoken to Thor, I have spoken to Freya, and I have spoken to Lord. Yeah, got you. I'm not bashing what have, Christian Yeah, yeah, what, what, so what have they done for you? Like, why do, why do you, why do you honor them and... Okay. good question. I had a bunch of stuff happen. I'm not going into detail, I'm kind of that. Okay? I've been looking for peace for years. For years, I've been looking for peace. I found peace when I went, when I trained. <laughs> I found peace when I found the Norse pagan religion. That's when I found peace. I found inner peace, I found inner love, and I found everything that I was looking for that Christianity never taught me, never showed me anything. Yeah. No, I, are you are you on any kind of medications? No. No? That's good. Good. You you don't suffer from like PTSD or anything? You do? PTSD? Yeah. So God's peace, when it comes, it removes all that other stuff. So Odin and all those people that you're talking about, they're not more powerful than to take away or that they would have taken away. They would have taken away your PTSD by now. God can, your God cannot take away my, my mental illness. He cannot can take Odin that. take away your? He hasn't taken it away for you. Okay. So, so he's not. So he's not powerful I, enough I to do that. To live with. I have found the inner peace that I have been looking for that Christianity and your God never showed me. My God showed me. Yeah. So, what, what kind of Christians were you around? I was Baptist. I was around Baptist. I was around Pentecostal, Apostolic. I was an outcast. Yeah, in like what? My family is. Still what's that? What's that? What, what do you mean by like? An, you felt like an outcast. I felt like I didn't belong. Like you didn't belong. I'll tell you what. Go to a pagan ceremony and see if see if you feel like you belong. I bet you won't. A and pagan the ceremony. Why is because you're an outcast to them. But pagan gods love everybody. It doesn't matter if you're Christian. It doesn't matter if you're if you're atheist. Pagan religion teaches love and acceptance in all. We don't preach hate for LGBTQ. So do you, do, do you guys accept? Do you guys accept? everybody. You guys accept murderers and kidnappers and rapists and you accept those people? Truly, truly. You're, you're saying everybody, so I'm, I'm just asking you. There's a place for everybody. Thank you. Okay? So is, is it okay what in they're your, doing? In your religion, it is hell. In our religion, it is hell. But yours is spelled H-E-L-L. Ours is spelled H-E-L. Our hell is made up of several different... So who, several, listen, who goes listen, to hell? In, in your religion? People that don't belong. Or wicked and evil people go to the deepest, darkest depths of hell where they are tormented. What makes a wicked person? They are tormented daily. What makes a wicked person? Murderers, child murderers. Just those two? Or people like that? Yeah, people like that. Yeah? So then where's the line drawn of who goes there and who doesn't? How do you, how do you how do you know how do you know if you're going to hell or if you're going? I know I'm going to Valhalla. It depends on what you believe. It depends on what you believe. So we can you create. You're going to heaven. We can you create. If you're going to the Christian heaven, then you're going to the Christian heaven. You believe you're going to the Christian hell, then you're going to the Christian hell. So we we have power to the create life, what whatever we. The afterlife does not matter what you do because we all fall will be reborn again. The afterlife is just temporary. We're all going to come back to the earth again. The earth will never end. So what if there's a murderer or, you know, a child molester then who believes that he's he going to, the first to heaven? In Helheim, 
where he will be tormented for all of eternity. What if he believes he's going to heaven? Huh? What if he believes he's going to heaven? That's up to him and, and the Christian God. So how do you... There earn? are so many gods that, that Christians do not understand. There are so many more powerful gods that, that Christians do not understand. I, I understand that there are tons, yes, of gods out there, and they're all fallen angels that were cast out of heaven. They're called principalities and rulers, now, okay, answer, rulers answer, of darkness, this one. spiritual hosts answer, of wickedness in heavenly places. Odin, the the answer, answer this one. people behind that is it's all unclean spirits. Answer this one, okay? Why is there no evidence? physical evidence of the Christian God. Yes, there is evidence of Jesus, but Jesus was supposedly God's son that was sent to wash away the sins of everybody once he was crucified on the cross. Yes, okay. Why is there no evidence? No images, nothing. Yet there are proof that Odin exists. There is proof that Freya, Zeus, uh, Helheim, Hel. Uh, because there are statues of them? No, I didn't say I would. That's why? There's proof in, in, in Norse history, there's proof. Yeah, yeah, there, there's proof that Jesus existed. He's a, okay, the, the, word the, was, the Word was with God and He was God. The Christian God exists. Jesus, Jesus is God. Why is there not proof that the Christian God exists? Listen, I see people... Just because the Bible says it doesn't mean that it's true. I'm, I'm trying to tell you what the proof is. I see people healed. I see demons come out of people, cast out of the people in the name of Jesus. I see sicknesses and diseases healed. Three months ago, three months ago, three months ago, no, no, no. Three, three months ago, I saw a guy with cancer who had no medical treatment at all get completely healed and the cancer leave his body. I've seen a guy with stage four cancer that had 280 tumors in his bones, in his skull, his spine, his hips, that got radically healed completely. They had turned him over to hospice, said, you're gonna die, this man's in his 30s. He has two kids and a wife, two sons and a wife. Turn him over to hospice, he gets completely healed, and now he's completely cancer free. So uh, another proof another proof, if it's in Jesus' name, it does. Also, I've, I've seen Jesus. You've I've seen, seen Jesus. What does he look like? You didn't let me finish my saying. What does he look you like? You cut me off. I've seen Jesus. I can tell you he's got hair of white. His face is shining like the sun. He's got eyes like fire. He's dressed in garments. There's King of Kings and Lord of Lords written on his thigh and his feet. They shine like burnished bronze. Okay. That's what Jesus looks like. So listen, um, I've Jesus seen black, black, Middle Eastern black. Well, where he was born and raised was over in the Middle Eastern area. So I'm assuming, I don't know, I'm assuming that he would be of that same descent. It would be real odd if he was, if he was, you know, Asian, but he was born and raised up in that, in that area of the world. It, it wouldn't make sense. So the, the biggest proof that I have is I had my life in my own control at one point and I was trying to make all the decisions and I was trying to line my life out, do all the right things, have a good, happy life, have peace, have joy, all that stuff that you're talking about. You're even searching for peace. I tried to do that on my own and where I led myself was not a good place. And I had also things like uh, I struggled with depression at, at one point. Um, I struggled with whatever, loneliness, uh, anxiousness. I struggled with a, with a lot of different things. I had a lot of bitterness in my heart, a lot of unforgiveness, girls who had cheated on me, who had broken my heart, all that stuff. So anyways, I, when I gave my life to Jesus, when I called upon Him as my King and started actually living for Him, like actually living for what He created me for and obeying what He was telling me to do, that's when my whole life got changed. And that's when I started to receive true peace that removed all of that other stuff, like PTSD. His peace removes that away, joy removes that away. So Jesus has, I've seen Him overcome all any other powers that there possibly are Jesus, his power is greater. It's way greater you know, you know than Odin. It's way greater you know so than all those, all those unclean spirits. You know what is so beautiful about this country and this world? We 
we are a melting pot of different religions and different people and different peoples and walks of life. We can believe whatever the fuck we want to believe. You can. You can believe whatever the fuck you want to believe. You're right, but one of them's going to be true. Oh, well, one of them's going to be true. You will never know that until There really you die. is a God. You will never know that until you die. I know because everything God wrote in his scriptures, I've seen come to pass in my own in my own life. He inspired it all. Man wrote that and man translated that from ancient Hebrew. Well, if men if men messed it up, then why do I still see the, the same results that God said this is going to take place if you do this? a place like this and you preach hate. Nowhere in the Bible does it say a man shall lack, shall never lay with another man or he's going to hell. No, that was mistranslated and it was mistranslated from homosexuality, or not homosexuality, but, uh, uh, fuck really? Yeah. So, pedophilia. So pedophilia. I just want to tell you, I'm a minister myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And even though I understand what you all are doing, but my question is, do you only do it at a private event? No, 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 man. Every week, multiple times a week, I'm on. I'm in the downtown square. I'm on WKU's campus. We go into to neighborhoods, do like sit down discipleship. We like bring food, actually eat with the people, um, yeah. and then also like like relational, you know, type stuff. Like I, I disciple a younger cousin and some some friends and stuff like that. So that, this isn't the only way we do it. Um, but this is because that that would that would have made me upset. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I I understand you because I am a minister. But at the same time, I look at it different. I look at it as I I cannot judge what they do, even though I may not I may not uh, agree with it. But it's not for me to judge. It says that God will judge. He will separate the sheep from uh, rain from. But you you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The sheep from lamb. So yeah, yeah. The, 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 the ghost, but I, yeah, she, yeah, I, I, yeah. I get what you're saying. So, so I'm, I'm not out here. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not making no, no, like, like judgment. Right. I'm, I'm not judging these people. But what the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit came to convict of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And we see that from, from Jesus, from all the disciples, from the apostles who went out. We see them preaching repentance and remission of sins. So right. if you'll, I, I, if you'll, yeah, yeah, if you'll turn away from sin and turn and put your faith in Jesus, then you'll be washed clean. Like he said earlier, you'll be washed clean. You'll be cleansed, um, and you won't have to pay. So, so what, what God does want us to do, though, He said, uh, basically, we, we're able to convict people of sin. We we can call sin sin. We love them. I'm not, so a judgment would be me finalizing something. Boom, judgment gaffle no, goes down. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying that, like, I said, like I said, I understand what you're Because we are supposed to go and preach the So I was just questioning if this was the only situation. Okay. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because then it would seem like, hey, but if you say that you do it everywhere else, then, you know, I wasn't here to stop you. I was just here to make sure that it didn't get out of hand. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a minister myself, and I just want people to enjoy themselves. And then when I can't present God to you in a way that you are willing to accept it, mm -hmm. then I am. Yeah. So, because a lot of times I'm going to be here, you're going to be talking, and I'm going to be willing to accept are, are you, you're, you're, you're with him? Oh, that's my, my family. Okay. You look so... I know people say this and it's weird, but you look familiar. I don't know why, but uh, he's the city commissioner. City commissioner. That's why, Carlos Bailey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I pray for you every day, bro. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Where's my cousin? Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. God bless you, my Yeah, yeah, God bless you. Is it your mom? No, it's, uh, God bless you. she's like a mother in the faith, I guess you could say. Gotcha. Uh, but, yeah. Like I said, I wasn't trying to, you know, I know a lot of people, they will only preach the word in events like this. It's like, okay, well, are you going to the jails? Are you going to the hospitals? Are you going to the people that are out on the streets? If you're not doing that, then what are you doing here? Yeah, yeah. So, that, that's the only thing. I wanted to ask yes, sir. you that. Yeah, so, and that, that, that makes sense. Right. It does. So, I mean, if you go everywhere, then you go whatever you're doing exactly what God told us to do. Amen. So I'm not mad at all. You know, I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Is, it, is there any way we could, we could pray for you? I mean, we can pray right now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anything specific? 
you know? No. Just everybody be, everybody be, you know, good and come on the court. Are yeah, you yeah. recording? I, yeah, 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 I am. Um, but yeah, what, what's your name again? My name is Bryson. Bryson, okay. Father, I thank you for Bryson. God, I thank you for his life. I thank you that you revealed the truth to him. God, and I just pray that uh, the fire that you placed within him, even even your Holy Spirit that you placed within him, um, Lord, I, I just pray that he'll, he would be built up in you further and further, God, and all that you've created him for, God, would come forth. Lord, that he would res- realize all the authority that you've given him. Lord, the boldness, the power that it means that we have when your spirit comes upon us to witness for you. So, Lord, I just pray that you, um, even the things that you're teaching him right now, God, I pray that you make them so real to him. Um, God, take him further than he ever thought or his family thought he could ever uh, go for your name's sake. Not, not for him, but for your name's sake. Lord, I pray that he would even begin to, as he ministers and as he's preaching your word, um, whether that's one-on-one or in front of people or whatever it is, God, I pray that it would be surprising to him, Lord, the things that you're beginning to bring out of his mouth, that he would even be learning while he's even speaking to those people because it's your spirit inside of him that's speaking through him. So I pray, God, that you fill him right now, afresh and anew with your Holy Spirit. Be filled right now with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it, Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you, brother. So next year, I think my church, we're going to do a tent. We're going to do a booth tag. Cool. So, That'd be awesome. Maybe some y'all look into it, too. Yeah. Booth yeah, yeah. So, there are Christians out here. You know, so. Yeah. But, all right, y'all, I'm glad it didn't get wild or anything like that. Yeah. So, God bless you all. Yes, sir. You too. See you later. God bless you. Have a good one, man. What's up, guys? Not much. I just wanted to say um, what you did was great today. Yeah? Yeah. Thanks for the encouragement, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. What's your, what's your guys' names? I'm Kasai. That's what's weird. We're both straight. We only came out here just to see what was going on. You came out here? You. you got forced to? Yes, I did. But, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So you, you, you guys believe in Jesus? Yeah. Yeah? You feel like you've uh, you've given him your, your life? No. No? Not that far. You feel like you're living for him fully? No? No. No? What's, what's holding you back? I just believe that he exists. You believe that he exists? Yeah. Yeah? We don't, I don't know. So do you, you, you believe that he's the son of God? It's like, yeah, we believe he's the son of God. Yeah? It don't make sense, but like, I just don't care. You, oh, you, you just don't care about it? It's just kind of like it It doesn't affect you that much? Yeah. Well, man, he, he loves you. He created you. He's got an amazing plan for your life. Yeah. He does, man. Um, if, if you'll give him your whole life, that's when you'll see how, how amazing he really is. He's probably revealed himself to you a little bit. Can, can I pray for you? Yeah. What, what, what's your name? What is it? Notorian? Yes. Could, could I pray for y'all? Huh? Could I pray for y'all? I'm okay. You okay? Yeah. I mean, you, you got nothing to lose, so. I could. What, what about you? Yeah, you can. Okay. What, what's your name? Marissa. Marissa? Notorian, right? Yes, Did I say it right? Yes, sir. All right. Father, I thank you for Notorian and Marissa. God, I thank you for their lives. Lord, you love them so much. I just pray that you reveal your love to them in a whole new way today. Reveal your amazing plan for their life. God, draw them closer to you. Draw them, oh God, closer to you. Make yourself so revealed to them. Even touch them by your spirit right now, God. I pray that you reveal yourself to them by your Holy Spirit. Your love for them, your peace. Reveal your peace right now. Reveal your joy right now. Bless them today, God. May your will be done. Lord, we thank you that you died for us so we can live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All, right, yeah. All right, bro. See y'all. Come preach the gospel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could I pray for you? Yeah? Any, anything specific? Yes. Yeah? Mm-hmm. But I know it's like Satan is just being a little snot because that's what he does. He drives us crazy. So yes, will you just pray with me? Yeah, 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 for sure. What? What's? I don't have the to know the details. Um, just pray. 
pray that I'll stop. Pray, pray that I can just be calm and, and try my best to love him the way God loves him. Yeah. What, what, what's your name? Anna. Anna. Father, I thank you for Anna. God, I thank you for her life. Lord, you, you know every, um, every concern of her heart, every worry of her heart. God, you know it all. Lord, you know exactly the answers. Lord, you came to, to heal the brokenhearted. So, God, I pray that you would touch her right now in Jesus' name. Touch her heart. Heal her heart. Lord, if there's anything that she needs to release, like just let go of as far as bitterness or envy, like hurt or any of that stuff that has come through this, God, I pray that you would just help her with the same mercy that you offered to have mercy and to pray for and to love. And, Lord, I just pray that your will will be done in her life. God, lead her around the people you desire her to be around with, gathering with your children, the ones that you desire her to be around with. God, I pray that you would give her the strength and the boldness and the grace um, to, to just be where you desire her to be, God. So I just pray that you bless her today. Give her peace right now. If there's any um, unclean spirits at work um, with all this strife and all this stuff that's going on, Lord, I pray that you protect her, that you keep her from the evil one. God, and that you would even bring healing through her to these people that are around her. Bring the truth through her to these people around her. And may they see you, Jesus, living in her and see how they ought to also follow after you and be an example after you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Yeah. He loves you so much. What's your name? Nicholas. Nicholas. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Y'all have a great day. Yes, man. You too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there any way we could pray for you? Yeah, anything specific? Yes, I'm going to be falling away Catholic and I'm going back to my faith and taking religion classes. So just that I can grasp it and stay with it. Okay, so you left it and now you've come back and you're you're going back through the classes and stuff like that? Yeah, I, I'm going in like, <clears throat> I'm going in as an RCA, like a convert, so I can start from the beginning. I was raised Catholic as a child. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, I, I was actually raised Catholic myself. Um, I wouldn't like say I'm Catholic at this point, but I, I was raised and I was confirmed in baptism and yeah. uh, first communion and all, all that stuff. Um, the, the, the thing that I missed in the Catholic Church, I, I'm not judging Catholics. Yeah. I, I know there are many devout um, people who really love God um, and are really fervent for Him and, and things like that. Um, but, but for me, I got so caught up in kind of the traditions and the repetition of everything that it kind of had no meaning to me. And I was just kind of going through the motions. Did you go to Catholic school? Um, no, I went to like CCD, but I, I didn't go to Catholic. I had relatives that went to a Catholic school. But I just got to a place where I was going through the motions and I really didn't know God. Yeah, I really didn't know who he was. Um, and I really didn't know Jesus. But then I found out that, that truly the gospel is that if we'll turn away from our sins and put our trust in Jesus as far as like truly live for him for the rest of our lives, like I'm giving you all of me, all my heart, all my life, and I'm going to live for you. That's when things shifted in my life. And that's when I truly, the, the Bible says that if you'll um, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you'll believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. So after I made that commitment to him, um, that's when uh, I guess I really started to know him. And from that moment forward, I've started to, to build my relationship with him and get to know him more and get to know his heart more. And I'm not perfect, I haven't arrived, but every single day I, I get to know him more. Um, what, what is your, uh, you should study to be a minister. Yeah. I'm a I'm a outreach pastor right now at a church. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, but but yeah, yeah. I should keep studying. You're right. But maybe that would put you in an office in a special place, and then you wouldn't be able to reach out like this. Yeah. I don't know. Just yeah. Have, have we'll to, see. God has a plan. I can. I, I can. You have the gift, but Catholic. A Catholic. Catholic priests don't have to give preaching. Mm. They just, you know. Yeah. They really don't. But. Yeah. Have you ever thought about trying out um, a, a different church other than Catholic? It doesn't. I, I just grew up that 
the ceremony, of course, is the deepest of it, and I just, I, I can't separate from that. Yeah. yeah. You can, but I, I understand there's kind of a, a pulling there, and you kind of want to stay stay in it. And, and I'm married not Catholic. You married not Catholic? Yeah, but he, he was... I, I wasn't attending Catholic church, and I wasn't really attending the children. And he said, what's up? Now, Mike, you need to take those kids to church. I signed that paper. Oh, yeah. Well, almost in the Catholic church, if you marry a non-Catholic, they have to sign a paper that, that they promise that they will raise the children, help them raise the children Catholic. But he said, I needed to take them because he signed the paper. Yeah. That's not what he's saying. <laughs> yeah. Have, have you ever um, have you ever confessed that Jesus is your Lord and, and believe that in your heart? Yes. Okay. Good. Yes, yes man. Awesome. Well, uh, can I ask you? You got a cane there. Is yeah. it just pain or? I had uh, the hips replaced. Hips hip replaced. Yeah. Okay. Do you, you have, does it cause you pain? Uh, yeah, it does. It does. You have yeah. you like sense pain even now? Uh, not now. It's not right it now. Comes, goes, depends on what I do. Got you. So what, what does it kind of hinder you from? Like you just can't really, it hinders mainly your walking or what? Yeah. Walking. walking. Got you. Is there anything you can't do? Uh, I, I can't drive. I'm almost done. Sorry. I'll, I'll let y'all go. Sorry to interrupt yeah, you guys. Yeah. I, I, I'll pray real quick. Um, so I, I have good news for you. The kingdom of God has come near to you today. Um, and if you'll allow me to, to pray for your hips, Jesus will heal your, heal your hips right now. Yes, ma'am. All right. And your, your name again? Martha. Martha. Father, I thank you for Martha. We speak to these hips. Be healed now. Arthritis, get out. Leave her in Jesus' name. All pain, leave these hips. Hips, be healed. Lord, you are the great physician. You created her. And it's nothing for you to tweak or fix anything that's within her body. But all things are possible for you. So I thank you these hips are being healed right now for your glory's sake. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen her faith, God. Draw her closer and closer to you every day. God, reveal to her the truth. May she not see any um, or, or get caught up any kind of traditions of men or, or anything that, that would take the place of true relationship with you each and every day. God, I pray that you fill her with the Holy Spirit right now. Help her to, to walk in your will for her life every day. In Jesus' name, bless her today. Fill her with peace and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Yeah. Could you could you test it out? See, see if it... It should be uh, different. It's better. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're you're, you're going to be able to go without that cane. Yes, man. God bless you. I'm walking too slow, man. You can go ahead. And I'll let you go ahead. I just always walk faster. Okay, got you. What was actually going on down here? I just got off work. It was, uh, it's called BG Pride Festival. So it's uh, like the LGBTQ community. They come down, have like a concert. And I heard music. I work at a medical center and I heard music all the way down there. And I was like, something's going on in the parks. And yeah. But we, we were down here to, to preach Jesus. So for a little, little different reason. Yes, sir. Yeah, God bless you. Yes, sir. Like, I go to Woodburn Baptist. Okay. Um, I have for like, I don't know, 31 years. What church are you on? We're from New Life Church. New Life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's 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 right around the area. There's like three churches over there, but it's the right -hand side. it's the one that's on Scottsville Road on the right hand side. Okay. But, uh, okay. I just wanted yes, to talk sir. to y'all. Yeah, yeah. I'm Brad Morse. Nice to meet you, sir. You Nicholas too. Bowling. Okay. K Miller. Okay, yeah. Is, is there any way we could pray for you before you go today? Sure, sure. Yeah. Anything specific? Um, direction and uh, um, me and my son have kind of had a strained relationship for a while. My older son uh, just talked to my younger son a few minutes ago, but um, I guess family relations and direction um, to where I need to, what I need to be doing, where I need to be going. Yeah, for sure. You said Brad. Brad. Brad Morris. Is Morris. It? Morris. Like okay. Morse code. Okay, got you. <laughs> All right, Father, I thank you for Brad. God, I thank you for his life. Lord, you know your plan that you've created him for even before the foundations of the world. God, you've had a plan for his life. So God, I pray that you would help him to know what that plan is, even as your word says to know your will. 
God, I pray that you would just reveal it to him, God. Reveal it to him step by step. And God, increase his faith as you're the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, increase his faith to begin to take every single one of those steps or continue to take every one of those steps as even your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, I pray that you would lead him, that you guide him. Lord, help him to, to make every decision according to your will. God, I pray that you bless him today. Give him peace. Give him joy. Take any, um, any loneliness or anything like that away. God, and I pray that he would know that you're with him. Lord, I pray that you'd fill him afresh and anew. Can I put my hand on your shoulder? I pray that you fill him afresh and anew with your spirit right now in Jesus' name. Your peace that surpasses all understanding. Your joy beyond expression. Fill him right now. Thank you that you are leading him, that you'll never leave him nor forsake him, that you haven't forgotten about him. Lord, that, that you're drawing him closer to you. Thank you for it, Lord. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to speak. I feel like the, the Lord is saying, um, my son, I've seen you. I've seen your heart cries. I've heard your prayers. I'm answering them, and I'm drawing you to me come closer for I'm giving you the grace to come close to my heart give me all your worries give me all your cares for I care for you and I will take care of them I love you my plan for you is good you haven't missed it it's not too late just continue in my way you'll continue to find me in Jesus name amen Thank amen you yes sir God bless you. He loves you so much. He does. You said a few things that I don't know how you, you wouldn't have known if I hadn't told you, but uh, yeah. that's the Lord. That's the Lord. That's all the Lord. I, I like, don't even what? know why I can't even come, came, came by here. This is out of my way. Because of him. Because of him. Yeah. yeah. Nice what, 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 what were some of the things? I'm curious. Uh, the loneliness. And yeah. Since the divorce, uh, not being able to be there for those little life moments with my children. Um, and uh, you know, I to find myself and find my manhood and my uh, image through him. But then, it seems like every time I, I try harder, Satan keeps pulling me back. You know, so it's just it's how it's been for me. Yeah. So. I, the, even even the, the Lord just kind of speaking over you and, and revealing those things to you, because that's truly the Holy Spirit. I couldn't have known that. So that's Him. I think He broke off some of those things that were, were hindering you uh, from moving forward. Um, and now you're going you're, you're, you're gonna to feel a new freedom to, uh, to push forward towards Him that you haven't felt in a while. It's like you know what to do. You know what you're supposed to be doing. And you even have that gut feeling and... You know, all the things that have been instilled in you by godly people. But uh, what is it in Romans that said, For I do not do the things that that I know are right. I do the sin that is within me. Yeah. It's something yeah. It's I, like I know what you're talking about. Seven, yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah, and right, right after that, uh, right at the beginning of Romans 8, it says, But who will set me free from this? Thank God for Jesus and it's Christ Jesus. Is, yeah. Is, yeah. So he sets us free. Um, not only from like the consequences of those sins, but but fills us with the Spirit so we can overcome those things. You know, like like Romans seven is talking about, and then Jesus sets him free from those things. Truly, so so that he doesn't have to walk. Of, of that Romans seven that it says the thing God Jesus thank right you, something I can't remember the exact wording. Yeah, I guess it depends on what translation you look at, but yeah. And then the yeah, and then the, then the Holy Spirit helps us to to walk in newness of life. Yes, sir. To turn away from a lot of that that stuff. But anyways, it was nice to meet you, sir. You too. You too. I better get out of here. Good we we'd love to see you. All right, bro. Yes, sir.